to do on Joe Rogan's record podcast last Wednesday. And no, I had a ruptured bicep. I had surgery scheduled for Friday. Going back two weeks ago, I had surgery Friday. Supposed to be in a sling, but these modern systems actually have a plastic encasing. So I'm able to drive, you name it, uh, thanks to the developments uh, of science. Uh, so I'm doing good. Thanks for all your support. But no, Eddie Bravo did not do any backflip karate attacks on me or jujitsu, even though I'm sure he would have kicked my ass. I was joking when I said I'd beat him up if he kept denying that the government was killing babies after they were born. Eddie obviously knew that that was happening and was teasing me, and I figured it out halfway through, and it was basically WWE wrestling without uh, any of the uh, pre pre preparation for it. It was like Andre the Giant and, and, and Hulk Hogan acting like they were fighting. It wasn't real, but everyone thinks that Eddie you know, tore my arm out of socket, and that, that's not what happened. Actually, though, if you want to get incredibly technical before I get into all the crazy news, I went to a steakhouse with Joe after the uh, record podcast, and my bicep was already really torn and ripped. And so we're walking out into this parking garage, and I stumble over one of those little dividers so your car doesn't drive over, and Joe, lightning fast reflexes, grabs my arm and it tore the bicep even worse which which is good because then they could fix it even better but if you technically want to get there it wasn't eddie did some backflip on me or some some jujitsu move it was joe rogan but not intentional but maybe it was karma maybe i went too far my attacks on joe and so the next morning it was all black and blue again but luckily i had surgery scheduled the next day so it was all perfect it all worked out but that's what the doctor said he said once the main tendon blows it all just starts ripping out. That's why you see old men like have a collapsed bicep a lot of times, and they call it the Popeye syndrome, where the muscle's way up here at the top because there's no tendons. So that's basically what happened. Uh, so I've just spent two, three minutes on something that doesn't matter, but that's why I've got this uh, giant, giant cast. Um, this is a modern cast. There's a, there's a cast under there. But again, it's plastic, so they can reset it. So that's what's going on here. Okay. We have a particularly important news day when we come back from break. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, this is a CNS News, has links to AP, you name it. Uh, Health and Human Services, that's the federal government, extends contract to continue making humanized mice with aborted baby parts for another 90 days. So we'll be uh, looking at all that and the fact that we've got, got Governor Northam continuing to defend keeping babies alive and harvesting their organs. That's our central big enchilada broadcast, the attack on the family, the attack on humans, this anti-human future the globalists are trying to build. Then that translates into the Canadian Supreme Court ruling, the government will take your children from you and forcibly sterilize them if they can trick them once to say they want to be transgendered. So no age of consent. It's not a pervert, you know, regular child molester coming to your door. It's the government. They trick your 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 year old, whatever the case is, to say they want to be another sex. They take you away from your parents and chop your huevos off. That is the Canadian Supreme Court. We'll get to all of that uh, coming up. A, a lot of former top Olympians are coming out uh, and saying that, you know, this is insane that men are now winning all the swimming, they're winning the wrestling, uh, they're winning the uh, races because they're men. They're men. You just say, oh, I'm a woman, and, and, and love me. And then and they win all the, all the races. Uh, women are saying this is an attack on women existing. Yes, I'm glad women are now figuring that out. To continue human mice hybrids for organ harvesting. HHS extends contract to make humanized mice with aborted baby parts for another 90 days. We're going to be getting to that. And again, why do they do it? Because once they mix the genetics of an animal with a human, then they can say the human has no rights. That's going to tie into Governor Ralph Northam, who said that they keep babies alive and harvest their organs. And then when he got in trouble, they had it in his file that he was in blackface. They activated that to go ahead and distract from what he was doing at that point. So we're going to go behind the shadow government, behind the breakaway civilization, here today in detail, all that. Also, the Democrat Party, basically funded by the Chai Coms, the globalists, and others, they have come out, and as I told you they would do, because they'd actually admitted this before, 
but was in more like party emails and communications that we got but wasn't really publicly announced, but, but it was publicly admitted to launch 80-plus investigations as soon as the Mueller report comes out, which is set to come out any day now. And then they're going to go after everybody under the sun, none of it Russia-related. Democrats prepare for end of Robert Mueller probe with new investigations. And then we've got, well, the amazing speech, record-long two-hour-plus speech of Trump at CPAC. Very eloquent, very powerful. Shows you how much energy the 72-year-old has. Then the bad side of that, Laura Loomer is joining us next hour. She's top story on right-hand side of Reservoir.com. Investigative journalist, conservative. Laura Loomer got thrown out because she saw Oliver Darcy, the CNN thought police commissar, and she went over and said, how dare you brag you take people off the Internet and uh, well, he complained about her and had her thrown out. I mean, this guy is like God. No one watches him, no one likes him, but he wants your website or you're, you're taking off Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. It happens. I mean, the arrogance. And she politely talked to this slime bag, uh, but Right Wing Watch, run by the Southern Poverty Law Center, an offshore criminal organization, uh, complained about it, so she was thrown out. So she'll be joining us. Uh, that's all coming up. But the first big thing I want to get to is incredibly exciting. And I've been trying to really cogitate on it and figure out exactly what it means. And it's basically Democrats leaving the sinking ship, hedging their bets, having a pang of conscience, and realizing that they're really committed to a party of pure evil. But I'm going to cover it next segment because I need time. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Van Jones coming out and admitting that Trump's done a great job with criminal justice reform and that governors in Republican states are the only ones to be cutting crime while cutting prison populations and not giving black people longer sentences than white people. I mean, Van Jones finally either shows he's got a soul or he realizes that the Republicans and all the internal polling everywhere else are winning, and so now he wants to jump ship. Because when he said, oh, I don't want to, I'm not going to join your party yet, he signals he's about to become a Republican. Maybe it's bad to be a, a, a propagandist, a mercenary for the globalist. And then the left called for his destruction. He, he's a racist. He's a demon now for doing this. And then we got John Stewart. This got no attention. John Stewart came out and endorsed Trump for actually getting all the congressional fundings that had been bipartisanly blocked for decades to, to take care of the firefighters, police, and others who breathe the deadly dust. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been blocked from them. He endorsed Trump. That got zero attention. They didn't come out and demonize John Stewart. He said, he did a press conference. I want attention. I want out this, this to be out. Trump's doing a great job. No coverage. There's a lot of other examples of that. So Trump's doing a lot of stuff that is super revolutionary and incredibly common sense, but he's not getting any support for it. But those of us that, that have supported Trump doing the right thing, all we get is demonization and lies and attacks. I support the president, think he's done a great job in many ways. He's done a bad job on some things. Nobody's perfect. But when I went on Joe Rogan's podcast, that's now the second biggest in history, said to be the largest podcast in the world within about three days of current growth rates. It's up at about 20-something million views right now on iTunes and uh, on YouTube, not to count other platforms. It's over 20 million right now. I just said I resent Trump because of the way the media frames it. He becomes my identity. When I was promoting populism, nationalism, anti-globalism, free market systems before Trump ever rode it on the wave. I'm not against Trump. It's just that I'm not Donald Trump. And I don't mind being attacked for supporting Trump. It's just that I, I, I cover so many other things than what Trump's involved in. And the left thinks if they can destroy me, they destroy Trump. And they don't understand even what's going on. So that's coming up as well. But when we come back, 
I'll get into why I think John Stewart and Van Jones have endorsed Trump and said he's doing the right thing. And what I think that portends in the future. And then we're going to get into the really bad news. The Supreme Court of Canada has ruled that the state will take your children from you. England already does this. Many European states do it as well. If they can convince your autistic or mentally retarded child they're really a boy or girl, well, they're not, because they want the eugenicists back to Hitler want to sterilize mentally retarded or autistic kids. So they, they convince them and tell them they're stars if they get sterilized. And then they convince your mentally retarded child or autistic child to be sterilized. Um, then they're taken and sterilized. And the Supreme Court's ruled they can take your child and sterilize them. And you can't say anything. So it's, it's serious eugenics, child abuse on record. We have the whole diagram, uh, and it's, it's just being done. We've turned our children over to the biggest predators in society, uh, and it's a sin before God, and it's, 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 it's very, very dangerous. So that's coming up as well. And a lot of other clips that I haven't mentioned, so that's what's happening today. Uh, that said, I have something very exciting to announce. You know, for over a year, I told you we were doing our last run of X2, the purest, cleanest, best iodine up until that point because it's 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 not out of the ocean like other iodines that are then bound to other compounds it's pure deep earth crystals you got to jump through dea hoops because it's so pure and they can use it as a derivative in drug manufacturing uh iodine is a key electrochemical processor in the body you must have it to live like oxygen or water and so I, I played guts ball with the manufacturers and the people that develop it and uh, bring it out. And it's been sold out for about almost three months. But we have now had the same company, the original X2, develop it again. And we were able to uh, do the exact same formula. And so it, it'll be back within a week or so. If you want to pre-order X2, the ultimate iodine out there, learn about the iodine conspiracy, learn about I, uh, IQs dropping when you don't have it. Learn about how the other iodines are bound. Get yours today at InfoWarsStore.com or Info Trump has done a great job with the Justice Department taking the hundreds of millions of dollars that both parties wouldn't give that was voted over a decade ago to the first responders, their families, those that died of cancer, those that have cancer from the World Trade Center attack because they never wanted to admit it that Lower Manhattan got toxified. And, and, and Trump has... Turn that money loose, just like he's doubled the number of visits at the VA for veterans. Doesn't mean the VA's perfect, but Trump's really trying to fix the bureaucracy. And so John Stewart comes out and says, Trump's done a great job, and it gets zero attention except for Breitbart and Infowars.com and Fox News in Phoenix. Even Fox News National that I know of didn't carry it. Why? Because they're not going to attack John Stewart. They're just going to ignore John Stewart. Here's that clip. And I'm going to say this now. I hope all, are the cameras on? Is everybody on me? The Trump Justice Department is doing an excellent job administrating this program. The claims are going through faster, and the awards are coming through. <laughs> the Trump Justice Department... <laughs> I don't know about anything else. I'm not going to comment on anything else. But see, that makes John Stewart, whose brother is the head of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and very powerful, makes John Stewart the high authority. Like, he waves a wand. He tells you when Trump's good. But why is he doing it? Because all his peers and people around him know that Trump's trying to turn the U.S. economy on. They know he's trying to do a better trade deal with China. They know globalism's been one-sided about selling America out about conquering us, about bringing us to heel. So he understands where the tea leaves are, and he's starting to jump ship. Now let's move on to Van Jones. Van Jones is the big Black Lives Matter guy. Why, he says when cops get shot, you know, it's their fault because they're racist. Van Jones is the guy caught peddling division in this nation, caught doing all sorts of evil things. So why would he suddenly go to CPAC and say that, well, it's Republican governors that are actually cutting prison populations and lowering crime by keeping hardened criminals and releasing nonviolent criminals. 
So the old model is fill up the prisons with lots of people, take nonviolence, turn them into violence by getting trained by hardened criminals. How about we just keep real hardened criminals, bank robbers, murderers, child molesters, rapists, and let other people nonviolent go? Well, a bunch of Republican states have done that, and they've lowered crime, and they've lowered the prison population, and they've saved money. So Van Jones comes out and says, wow, you've stolen, you've stolen my identity. You've stolen my position. You've stolen my issue. But wait, Van Jones, you're just an idiot. It was the Republicans that passed the Civil Rights Act. It was Republicans that always tried to do prison reform. It was the Clintons in 94 that got the crime bill passed that gave blacks triple the sentence of whites and funded federalization of prisons to build all these prisons. So you're acting like, oh, Republicans have just gotten smart and they're just now doing the right thing. No, you're part of the KKK party. You're part of the party where Hillary said blacks are animals that have to be brought to heel, super predators. You're part of the party of the KKK. Doesn't mean Republicans haven't been blue bloods and establishment like the Bushes and gone along with it. But you don't sit up there when the Republicans do the right thing and then wave a wand and go, well, it's Christians and it's libertarians in the party. Yeah, you, you know who we are. We have a soul. We're not for sale. You're for sale. You're for the Democrats. And you know Democrats are waking up, so you want to come and act like you wave the wand and say, you Republicans are pretty good on this. And we go, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. When you never did anything to actually criticize who did it or what happened, you're on the tit of Hillary Clinton. You're in bed with her. Hell, it's in the WikiLeaks that she wants race war and racial division. And as soon as those orders went out four years ago, you went out and doubled down your racial crap. So here's why Van Jones is doing it. Van Jones has had his ass handed to him. He knows demographically double the number of blacks are voting Republican now. Double the number of Hispanics. They're panicking. And he's saying to the Democrats, why the hell did you give up this issue? The Republicans have absolutely pincer attacked us and are exposing us. What are you doing? And Hillary just thinks if they, and Maxine Waters and Pelosi, if they just intensify racial division, people will hear about race, 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 and not actually see where people are getting screwed over. So it's a test of the minorities. I think you're smart. Trump thinks you're smart. Are you smart? Are white smart? Are real liberals smart? Enough to know that the racial games that have been played could come to an end if we want to do it. Here's Van Jones at CPAC. Here's the deal. The conservative movement in this country, unfortunately, from my point of view, is now the leader on this issue of reform in that you look at Mississippi, a rock rib, totally conservative, former jailer is the governor there, Governor Bryant. Governor Bryant has cut the prison population and crime at the same time. Deal in Georgia cut the prison population and crime at the same time. Rick Perry cut the prison population, prison expenditures, and crime at the same time. Ohio, South Carolina, what you're seeing now are Republican governors being tough on the dollars, tough on crime, and shrinking prison populations, and showing the rest of the country that it can be done. Now, my problem is I now have a conservative movement that for libertarian reasons, for Christian conservative reasons, and for fiscally conservative reasons, is actually doing a great job on what should be my issue. This is supposed to be my issue. You are stealing my issue. So, uh, 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 <laughs> so they're welcoming you. Look, I'm gonna stay in my party. I'm gonna stay in my party. But what I want to say, but but take some dad gum credit for being smart. I've never seen a bird fly with only a left wing. I've never seen a bird fly with only a right wing, not even in Mississippi. We need each other. We need each other. So that's Van Jones realizing that he has no moral support for what he's done. He wants to act like he was actually fighting for all that when he was actually covering up for all that. And he realizes that he's being circumnavigated. He realizes he's being outflanked. And so now all he can do is sit up like a moral authority and go, you've done the right thing. But when he did that, 
Everything from USA Today, the New York Times, the Washington Post said Van Jones is done. He's a racist. He's a white supremacist. I mean, the articles are up on Infowars.com. That's the craziest. But let me tell you, the state will take your child, if they're autistic or mentally retarded especially, when the government convinces your kid at school that they're another sex, they sign a piece of paper, the age of consent's gone, just like, you know, we had it for pedophiles and perverts. Now, the state's the pedophile, it's the pervert. It convinces your mentally retarded child that they're going to have their balls chopped off or they're a woman, they're going to be injected with testosterone, and it's done. It's horrible, it's predatory. Our governments shot up people from Canada to Brazil with live syphilis. That's who runs our governments. Criminals get in there, they crave power, and now... They're going to come, and they're going to they're gonna fry them with hormones, and they're going to chop their testicles off. And you're going to love it, and you're going to thank them for doing it. And top Olympian women are saying men are taking over all the sports and women's sports. Well, they're getting in trouble. Those are women. No, they're not, but it's the total societal takeover. It's all up on Infowars.com. It's all about depopulation. It's all about total control. It's all smiley-faced leftist cult members who want your children, and they will get them. Biological men are dominating women's sports. Here's a Caitlin Bennett report at InfoWars.com. Shows men, obviously, with wigs, beating women at basketball. What you just saw is the future that liberals want in women's sports. So there's a huge problem in women's sports right now, and it's all because of the ridiculous social justice agenda that has been shoved down our throats for the last five plus years. We're told we have to accept things that we know aren't true, like that this 41-year-old man is actually a six-year-old girl, or that this girl is actually a real cat. We are told to abandon science and forget everything we know is true, and regard men as women and women as men, well, now we have actual men beating actual women in their own sports. And it's very progressive. I mean, we make jokes of this. It's a big guy running over girls in basketball. It's been an issue for a few years now, but you probably didn't know because why would the liberal mainstream media put out that their social justice feminism campaign backfired? And now men are dominating women's sports. That would be rather embarrassing for them. How you think? In 2017, a male entered a wrestling tournament. And when I say male, I mean female. And this is so confusing. So let's step back for a second. This female is taking testosterone to transition into a male, but is still competing in women's wrestling. She ended up winning the state title undefeated. Last year, she did the exact same thing. So basically, a woman taking testosterone injections, who demands to be called a boy, just won a statewide wrestling title against other women for the second time. In March 2017, a 39-year-old male decided he was going to be a female and he won his first international women's weightlifting title, all while breaking four national records in the process. Something tells me he couldn't win in men's sports, so he had to go over to female sports. I'm gonna win the women's championship. You're not even a woman. <laughs> What'd you say? In October of 2018, a biological male became the first ever transgender world champion in a women's cycling event. Look at this photo. That is obviously a dude. Come on. Just last week, two biological men won first and second place at a girls track and field championship in Connecticut. They took first and second place. What's more alarming than this is that according to the Gateway Pundit, Connecticut is one of 17 states that allows transgender athletes to compete without any type I of I love the mental illness. So that basically means they can just call themselves a female and be allowed to compete. Nothing has to change about That's them. Right, no total mental illness. surgery and no hormonal it. treatments. And you gotta yeah. see the video of your radio listener. 
It's up on Infowars.com. Oh, champions. Are you ready to lose? It's the guy and the girl are about to race, but to he's got a big wig on, so it's okay. Track and field. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not even a Biological men are dominating women's months. sports. Infowars.com. I've been a woman for two days. <laughs> What a Young champion. Young women to win the championship in Connecticut then had the nerve to suggest that girls have an advantage over him. So instead of these two men competing against boys, they magically get to call themselves girls and win championships. It's ma'am. Feminists should be outraged over this because instead of empowering female athletes, Two boys just stole a girls' championship from actual females. This can only mean that one day, they will be taking scholarships from them too. Thankfully, some female athletes are starting to speak out. One of the girls who just lost to these men told Laura Ingram that it's very frustrating. She said, we are not physically able to be competitive against someone who is biologically a male. Duh. In fact, she admitted that everyone in the race already expected to lose to these two men. The girl said, well, we all know the outcome of the race before it even starts. It's demoralizing. This is simple science. Men have higher bone density, larger muscles, and higher testosterone levels. Men are different than females. And that's why they were the hunters, they were the caretakers, and they're the providers in a family. If you thought it would stop there, you're dead wrong. Now the Olympics is trying to allow men to compete in women's sports. In prior Olympics, transgendered athletes were able to compete if they had gender reassignment surgery and underwent two years of hormone replacement therapy. As if chopping off your ding-dong suddenly makes you a woman. But now, under their new proposed rules, they will be able to compete after just one year of hormone replacement therapy and without having to have surgery. This means that literal men with wieners still swinging between their legs will be able to compete against women at the Olympics. It's a total breakdown of society by design. I can only imagine how many failed athletes who have aspired to become Olympians would now call themselves female for a year just so they can live out their dreams. Not good. And it's very progressive. These people are less than 0.6% of the population in America. Yet 100% of America's population is supposed to succumb to their rules, their truths, and their demands. Leftists, you wanted this. And now it's time to own up to it. You don't care about women, and if you claim you do, you will fix this. Otherwise, it's only a matter of time until LeBron James actually comes out like this for real so he can finally get as many championship rings as Michael Jordan. But see, we say it's up to them to fix it. They create the crisis to offer the solution. This is a plan to wreck the family. Just like AOC says, stop having kids. Don't have kids. If we can't kill woman. your babies in the womb, we're going to make them autistic with chemicals out of the womb and then sterilize them. Carson. Johnny Carson. This is all part of the plan show that when they've got human-animal hybrids and they're harvesting babies' organs and they've got uh, new humanoids that are th have three fathers and three mothers and all these new weird things they're designing that you accept it all because you were taught in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19 that the word mother and father was bad. And, and that you could have men taking over in the Olympics, all the different, uh, the high jump, the long jump, the 100 yard. The mile. And, and, and it's like, but they're women. They say they are. And so all these new humanoids they're going to dump out, why, they're human too. And, oh, they're saying robots are going to have rights. And AI is going to have rights. You're all being taught to be replaced. You're all being taught you have no basic freedoms. You're being taught you have no free speech. The existing order is being overthrown by mega corporations that just like Monsanto created the Terminator genes and the Terminator seeds where the seeds don't produce more plants later. They work one time and that's it. You gotta go back to Monsanto to get it. And that's where we're going with humans, where we're totally sterilized, dehumanized, poisoned and attacked. But if we give up our humanity to big tech, 
to big pharma to big genetic engineering. They can fix all the problems they're engineering. That's the takeover plan. And we're so confused that all our kids are taught, you're a boy, you could be a girl. You're a girl, you could be a boy. Be loving. Let the government teach your kids they're another sex. Let the government take your kids away and sterilize them like the Supreme Court of Canada just ruled. The father says, I think my daughter's mentally ill. I don't want the state to take my underage daughter and sterilize her. You tell her that she's not a boy one time you're arrested. Imagine if some pervert told your daughter that, but it's the state, so it's okay. The same state bringing in radical Islam and doing all of this. So that's the reality. This is the takeover because they know we don't want communism. They know we don't want pedophilia. We, they know we don't want socialism. They know we don't want what they're putting on us. So they make it illegal and they shovel it in our face and they say the most radical, sickening, evil things. Like the governor of Virginia going, I believe we should pass a law New York did. We keep the baby alive and we do what we want with us and it's good after it's born because they're already keeping them alive and they've been caught. So now they've got to normalize them and go, of course we keep them alive. But I want to shift gears here. Then I've got some solutions next hour. Laura Loomer thrown out of CPAC for talking to Oliver Darcy, the CNN censor. He's just a royal god. You don't even talk to him. The Republicans bow. Oh, CNN, oh, your lordships. Because oh, they're the Republican establishment. They all come out of the same swamp that worships authority and the system. But let's go to this Mark Dice report on Millie Weaver, Infowars.com reporter, and the long, hour-long interview with Brian Stelter. But it tells you so much in the interview. I've got several coming up, not just this one. Where he's like, you know, I'm really busy, uh, but I can talk to you for a minute. But, you know, we only ban people off my Twitter who are trying to get famous off of me. And it's such a telltale thing, he says, as if he's the arbiter of who's famous. He's the arbiter. His show on the weekend doesn't have 200,000 viewers. He is a total failure, a New York Times propagandist, a fake news king, universally reviled, has no viewers, worse ratings on CNN, and he claims Mark Dice, who has videos with 20 million views, 30 million views, average video, half a million views, does four or five videos a day. That Mark Dice, a media analyst, a degreed journalist in your system, that Mark Dice, you blocked him on Twitter because he wanted your fame. No, he was debating you with disinfo and how you were calling for me to be banned. And so he said, hey, I challenge you, but because as a man, you're not a man and you couldn't deal with that challenge, and as you said, Alex Jones is a virus and a disease that must be banned. When someone challenges you on that, you say, oh, I only blocked Mark Dice because he wanted my fame. No, you want everyone else shut down so you think then you'll get fame. No one likes you, Brian. You're a little delusional fop. A fraud, your little red tie up in front of a bunch of leftist lobotomized zombies trying to act cool here. Fully controlled by these control freaks. And I want to get into a whole host of issues I haven't hit yet. That ties into the DNC says attempted cyber attack wasn't Russia. It was a test from Michigan. And I noticed this just happened again the last month. It happened again last year. Got no attention. I'll tell you about it at the start of the next segment. Yeah, that's the article from last year. I've got another one here. But right now, I want to go ahead and go to this. Tucker Carlson talks about PayPal banning Laura Loomer. How dangerous is this that for your political views, you've got good credit, but they take your banking away? This is the mark of the beast. This is the control. And if Trump doesn't do something about this, then nothing else he does matters. Here it is. Active deplatforming is ruining people's lives. I have been banned by Uber, I've been banned by Lyft, I've been temporarily banned by Facebook, Venmo, PayPal. 90% of my income came through PayPal. I've been banned on GoFundMe. Um, if you want to make money online, and many people do, PayPal is essential. In a recent interview with the Wall Street Journal, the CEO of PayPal, Dan Schulman, explained that diversity and inclusion are his company's top values. But of course he doesn't mean it. 
he means the opposite. Like most on the left, what Shulman actually wants is utter conformity, a world where only approved opinions are allowed. Last year, PayPal banned Alex Jones from using its platform for saying things they didn't like. They've also banned anti-Muslim activist Laura Loomer, the publication V-Dare, and a number of other people and organizations whose speech they believe should be silenced. Now, like, how would you feel if somebody shut off your PayPal or your bank account or your Twitter? So we're facing real authoritarianism. We're facing governments that are unified. It's the same in Germany, Canada, the U.S., England, the Netherlands. We're going to teach your kids they're another sex. We're going to take them from you and drug them and chop their balls off or inject them with testosterone. So instead of hiding giving people syphilis like Tuskegee, we're just going to do it out in the open. And we're going to do it like it's the socially right thing to do. And we're going to punish you if you don't socially do the right thing and follow along with what the establishment wants. You know, if America and the world puts up with this, we deserve what we get. Because I'll tell you, it's a paradox. An industrial society creates a very cushy living, but it also fosters a lot of weakness, mental weakness, moral weakness. And, and I'm certainly not on a high horse here, but I... I sometimes get why the Bible talks about God just blowing the whole planet up and getting rid of everybody. Because we shouldn't keep a world going where we abort most our kids and we devil worship and we let people molest kids in mass and it's state runs. So kids are only born to be abused by devil worshipers and, 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 and life is only there for psychotics to enjoy it. Just end it all then. Blow it all up. Burn it all up. Get rid of it. Now, I don't think we're to that point yet. But I just see people that are only into personal pleasure. And look, I enjoy enchiladas or a cold beer next, next person just as much. But it's not my God. It doesn't fulfill me at the end of the day. And all these people that just bow down to their own personal pleasure and fill in their calendar every day with what they think is good for them, they are soulless. I know these people. There's nothing there. They're like retarded in a bad way. To about 15 million views on iTunes. Other platforms, there are 5 million, so we're talking about, we're talking about already one of the top podcasts uh, that Joe has ever done. We're already talking about that. But it just shows how the system doesn't know what to do or how to handle that. Because people are hungry for real discussion and people that don't have filters. So that's coming up next segment ahead of Laura Loomer. We're going to play some of those segments and talk about it. It was number one on Google, number one on YouTube, but it was blocked in both. Now, last time I was on Joe, two years ago, it was blocked on iTunes. They didn't block it there. Four or five days later, it's number one, 15 million views, whatever it is, it's growing. That's just on one platform. Number one, despite suppression. And the suppressed four-hour-plus podcast is on Infowars.com and Newswars.com. Go hear what they don't want you to know and the full system what the elites believe not 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 what they put out on the news but what they believe at the end of the day what they're involved in and you're going to find out i'll get into that next segment that laura loomer joins us and i want to tie it into federal government extends contracts to make human animal hybrids that's mainstream news See, suddenly it's just kind of like, yeah, okay, they got the human-animal hybrids. Well, show them to us. What are you doing with them? See, they don't want that debate. And all I've ever done is believed in you and believe that if we have a debate about what's already been going on for a long time, you'd know. And that's why I get so pissed is I'm not mad at the crew or you or the audience I'm kind of sick of this, you know what I mean? I've been doing this 23 years, 24 years. I'm so sick of knowing what the globalists are doing and how to beat them, and then sitting back and watching people like they have had their eyeballs gouged out, and their, and their 
eardrums gouged out, not seeing or hearing or tasting or smelling or touching, when it's all completely obvious there's an anti-human, anti-God, anti-family agenda going on that is screwing everyone over. We're under total attack by psychotics that run major institutions. And now they're literally trying to end the family itself to conquer us, and we're putting up with it. But there's a lot of good news, too, so I should be more positive. So let's go ahead and play a few minutes of Tucker Carlson before he got Donald Trump Jr. on last week. And where they said in the whole 20-minute interview, the cavalry's coming. Trump knows conservatives are being censored. We're going to do something. Well, at least you know people are pissed. So that, that's Trump trying to get people out there watching, understand he's going to do something. Good. Because, you know, the tr president can declare an emergency on the border. That's in the Constitution. I can't believe Rand Paul says he can't. Or Justin Amash who's trying to get points with the media. But see, Trump should have tried to do it through the 76 law because then you can debate Congress's funding. Under an emergency, the president's job is the border. And so I agree with constitutional lawyer Stuart Rhodes that he should have just gone straight up with the Constitution instead of a law. But that's how his lawyers tricked him. It's the only way he can be beaten on that. But to say the president can't defend the border from invasion, that's unconstitutional. Well, then the whole country's unconstitutional. Here's Tucker Carlson on the attack on the First Amendment. There are some negative things that you could say about Donald Trump. What's interesting is that the left almost never says them. And spend, said they spend a lot of time telling you how Trump is a fascist who poses an imminent and terrifying threat to our constitutional order. Sounds pretty scary. Is it true? Well, consider the major freedoms protected by our Bill of Rights, the document that makes America distinct from all other countries. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, the right to keep and bear arms, due process under the law. Now, take a close look at today's news. Who exactly is threatening those freedoms? Is it Donald Trump? Whatever his faults, it is not Donald Trump. It is the left, and they are doing it more aggressively than they ever have before. As usual, their critique of Trump is pure projection. If you want to know what the left is actually doing, listen to the way they attack other people. Start with that foundational freedom, speech. If they can tell you what to say, you are not free. There is nothing they can't make you do. That's where the founders put it first. It's the freedom that comes before all others. The left has spent decades trying to weaken the First Amendment. They've done it in the sneakiest way possible by creating phony hate speech exemptions out of thin air. So far, the courts have not accepted this idea, that the idea that you can limit speech simply because someone else doesn't like it. So the left has a new plan now. They've allied with big corporations to make it impossible for people who say the wrong things to make a living in this country. You may have heard of a company called PayPal. It's an online payment platform, the biggest. If you want to make money online, and many people do, PayPal is essential. In a recent interview with the Wall Street Journal, the CEO of PayPal, Dan Schulman, explained that diversity and inclusion are his company's top values. But of course, he doesn't mean it. He means the opposite. Like most on the left, what Shulman actually wants is utter conformity, a world where only approved opinions are allowed. Last year, PayPal banned Alex Jones from using its platform for saying things they didn't like. They've also banned anti-Muslim activist Laura Loomer, the publication VDARE, and a number of other people and organizations whose speech they believe should be silenced. Shulman admitted that his company takes guidance on who to ban from the Southern Poverty Law Center. That's an entirely fraudulent organization that works as an arm of the Democratic National Committee. And then he got Don Jr. on to say, we know this is wrong, the cavalry are coming. Well, here's the deal. We have under commerce clauses, we have it under racketeering clauses, we have it under antitrust clauses. It's cut and dry that the Democrats are publicly organized harassing and attacking and suing and shutting down all their competition in coordinated operations. So I love a lot of what Trump's doing, but the First Amendment comes first. And, you know, I missed an important phone call a few hours ago. I think the White House knows how pissed people are. But if Trump doesn't act on this, it's like blowing holes in the bottom of your own boat. 
may have the sails up, you may have the whole crew, you may have a beautiful ship. But if you let somebody drill a hole in the bottom of the boat, I'm getting off the boat. Tell me I don't love the captain and love the ship, but you're going to the bottom, I'm getting the hell off the ship. We're going to go to break here in a moment. Views, 200 million views. But it's never recognized. The Super Bowl has like 80 million views, and it's just worshipped, and people pay $10 million, $15 million for a 60-second ad. It's just, it's just everyone just, oh, 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 even though their viewership's down 40% because of all the globalism and but it's garbage so when i get up here and i say wow look how Infowars continues to dominate it's not like oh i'm a really cool guy ladies you need to know that i'm the guy you want to be with it's not that it's not that i'm that good it's that humans have a serious hunger and a will and a desire to hear real communication that's a pro-human narrative and not some corporate predatory thing that's been cooked up. So, but we've always been shadow banned and blocked on YouTube. But despite that, with all our channels combined, we had like 7 billion views when they banned us last year, like 11 months ago. And it, to me, it's not like, oh, look, Pootie Pie has 80 billion views. I'm not as good as him. Young kids like to watch him. He plays video games. He's a great guy. I kind of, like, wish he'd be pure liberty and speak the truth because we could maybe save the planet. But I, it's not like, oh, I'm mad. Pootie Pie's bigger than me. But in this panopticon, there are things bigger than InfoWars. But when it comes to hardcore news and analysis on real issues, there's nothing bigger. I mean, you look at a Wall Street Journal or a uh, National Review. They don't even register to us. They're the supposed intelligentsia of the right-wing establishment, they don't even register because they're leftist, globalist, blue blood control. We're way up here. So their censorship project drives us down to here, but it creates that feedback loop of, oh, the Streisand effect, so we really go way up here. But it's not about how big I am. I just don't want to keep babies alive and sell their organs. I, I, I just don't want to, you know, have human-animal hybrids of the chai comms be our bosses. I'm not, like, trying to, like, someday I'll be the number one talk show host. Someday I'll, I'll, I'll be in charge. I'll be in, I don't want to be in charge. I want to be in charge of getting those in charge out of the way to turn you loose. But if you look at these numbers when I was on Joe Rogan, who never had me on in his first 910 episodes, had me on. It was the biggest episode he ever did, even though it was shadow banned. Yeah, zoom in on this. Zoom in right there. And whatever reason Joe did that, whatever, it doesn't matter. So then Joe has me on two years plus later. So the 9-11 episode, it's the 1,255 episode. And it goes, out of all the history of his episodes, a lot of these have been up for years, it goes to number one. That's over, uh, I talked to him a few days ago, it was at 11 million. Who knows, 15, 20 million, who knows what's that? Out of all his podcasts, it's number one in history. Not Elon Musk, not any of these other people. It's number one. 10 plus million views, Alex Jones. Now, you go to the front page of iTunes, it's not even listed. They don't show it. And it's the same thing with YouTube. Top podcast episode for all of Apple. For the entire week, it's Alex Jones Returns. When he sent this to me, it was over 10 million views. That was three days ago. Now, YouTube has all these top trending videos. Some of them a couple hundred thousand views, a few million views. We're at seven plus million, no coverage, not anywhere on trending. Again, it's rigged. It's not who really won the race. It's not who won the boxing match. It's not who delivered. It's a fraud. And then nowhere else is it listed. So what does that tell you? We deliver an information warfare product based in pro-human guts. 
I mean, why wouldn't it be that way? It's not like we're doing something special. I mean, I'm a human. I love my ancestors. I love you. I want to build something good. It's not like, it's not like we're doing something special. Don't thank us for this. But somebody stands up and talks about facts, and it's always number one. Not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five times, not ten times. Thousands of times we've been number one. Humanity wants men and women and families and third-dimensional resource expansion and a pro-human future and we're reaching to the stars people want victory they want success and we're told by hollywood and all the losers no you're going to be force fed all this stuff you're going to be force fed all these anti-human anti-male anti-family anti-female talk show hosts we're going to take the stars off netflix because people are downvoting it the good news is humanity is rejecting this. The bad news is, and here's where you play violins for real. They can't get women, they can't get men, they can't get Hispanics, they can't get blacks, they can't get whites, they can't get Asians. But you know they can get? Children. They've not differentiated the universe. They believe any adult is an authority figure. And all over the world they're teaching two-year-old kids, you're a girl, you're a boy. Let me sexualize you. Let me confuse you. Let me make you cool. Let me praise you in front of the class because you're a five-year-old boy and you put on a dress and you want to have your pee, pee cut off. It's classic villains that target children. It's classic villains that target the young because they can't beat up a woman or a man. They can't take on somebody that's differentiated and who has contact with their ancestors but they can take a baby. That's why Satanists do that, and they can have their way with them. And so I want you all to think about that today and where we stand. Our message dominates with adults. It dominates with people that have jobs and have lived lives, and no matter what color you are, but if you've been in the real world and, 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 and ran a company or worked at a company or drove a cab or been in the military and seen the real world. You hear this, you go, yeah, that's, that's what I've already experienced. That's true. But they got our kids and they don't know. So we got to ask ourselves, what are we going to do to get these hyenas, these wolves off our kids' asses? We're going to come back with Laura Loomer, who scares the system, bandit CPAC because the Southern Poverty Law Center said so straight ahead, but make no mistake. I mean, these women produce more than all the other men reporters I know combined. And that's not some leftist ass-kissing of women. I'm like, wow, why is it the women who are dominating? Well, the Bible says when men cease to be men, women will step up. So it's a very sad situation, I'll be honest with you. But um, when they were doing Shakespeare in the Park in New York a few years ago, simulating the murder of President Trump. It was Laura Loomer took it over and got tens of millions of views and got arrested. And she did it over and over and over again. And so many things, I can't list all her exploits. And then she went to CPAC and she was there on the Southern Poverty Law Center that runs a right-wing watch. She said, how dare you? She's so polite in the video. The full video is on Infowars.com. We got 20 minutes left. I'm not going to air it here. It's on Infowars.com. She politely talks to Oliver Darcy, the guy that I got banned off Twitter, they said, because I bullied him. I'm at a congressional hearing. He's there. He's calling for me to be banned. I say, how dare you? You're un-American. And they said, you're banned because of that. Well, she's there. And she's kicked out because of that. So I thought we should plug the video just so you can see it. And she's the top story on the right-hand side of drudgeport.com. The disruptor, Laura Limmer, kicked out of CPAC. But We'll get to the rest of the story in a moment, but here she is just simply asking questions. Let's show her when they actually throw her out of CPAC. Someone that, as she says, Donald Trump, Donald Jr., all of them retweet her. It doesn't matter. The Democrats are in control. The Southern Poverty Law Center runs Right Wing Watch. And just like Fox News, I talked to top Fox News hosts. I won't say names, but the top two. Uh, the top three, and they go, yeah, it's all Democrats here. They hate us. They run everything. They, 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 they it, 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 it's a nightmare. And so you, the Republican Party, Trump tries to do good stuff, but it's all run by Democrats. So here's that clip. This just, just happened uh, yesterday. 
So just so everyone knows, they're banning me right now from CPAC. I'm here at the security, and I'm one of Trump's biggest supporters. I have 265,000 followers on Twitter before I was banned. And, you know, I just talked to Don Jr. the other day. Don Jr. follows me on Instagram. Kimberly Guilfoyle follows me on Instagram. I just had dinner with Katrina Pearson last night, who's the senior advisor to President Trump, and they are now banning me from CPAC. They're taking away my media credentials. Any reason why they're taking away my media credentials? Can you just provide a reason? I've already explained that to you, ma'am. Apparently, somebody from CPAC doesn't want me attending. So, you see, Laura Loomer, Illuminate Media, CPAC 2019, media credentials. I'm banned on Twitter, banned on Uber, banned on PayPal, banned on Uber Eats, Lyft, GoFundMe, everywhere. And now they're banning me from CPAC. So. I mean, I'm one of President Trump's biggest supporters. I, the, 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 the politics are irrelevant for, for... It doesn't make any sense. I am I just had dinner with uh, his senior advisor last night, Katrina Pearson. Why would they ban me from CPAC? Okay, you, have to this is such that, bad optics. You'll have to discuss it with CPAC, okay? Right. This is such bad optics for CPAC to be banning me. All right, go ahead and fed it out. Let's I'm go to Laura. So, again, Trump and everybody's good, but the controllers are there ordering you removed... Because I'm not going to play the whole clip. This is like 10 minutes. Oliver Darcy, you just politely questioned him. They admit that's why you were banned. So, uh, Laura Loomer, uh, this is an example of how the Republicans bowed down to the Southern Poverty Law Center. Hi, Alex. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely disturbing, and it just reveals the real rhino nature and mentality of CPAC and their leadership uh, because— not only was I uh, I banned and I had my media credentials revoked as I was uh, waiting through uh, the line at security to go see President Trump speak on the last day of CPAC, but I also wasn't the only conservative banned from CPAC. Uh, there were many uh, prominent conservative individuals, including um, Faith Goldie and Nicholas Fuentes and several other people, including uh, correspondents from InfoWars, who were not allowed to enter, associates of Roger Stone, People who were put on some type of blacklist and prevented from from entering uh, the venue. And it's really interesting because the people who were banned from CPAC are the same type of people who are usually on these SPLC lists. And when I was uh, banned after I confronted Oliver Darcy, who works for CNN and, uh, you know, has lobbied Facebook and Twitter to ban you and people like like me and many others, Right Wing Watch, which is a branch of SPLC, an actual hate group uh, reached out to CPAC. They wrote an article about me accusing me of being an anti-Muslim conspiracy theorist, and they titled it, Why Did CPAC Give Media Credentials to Laura Loomer? And then when I was banned, they posted a celebratory tweet, a retweet of the article in which they said, we wrote this article yesterday, and since publication, CPAC has revoked Loomer's media credentials. So I think it's really absurd that here I am, one of Donald Trump's fiercest uh, defenders. I'm a very well-known conservative journalist. I've done amazing work for the Trump administration. Even when I was working as an undercover journalist for Project Veritas, some of my investigations had been tweeted by President Trump. Uh, he mentioned some of the videos during the presidential debates with Hillary Clinton. And well, let's so expand on that. Exactly. Trump doesn't know all that. They're literally demonizing the president's foot soldiers and right. acting like it's all bad and demonizing you. And it's, it's, it's beyond pathetic. And then, literally, the Republican Party itself just grovels to mainstream media because the average Republican leader is like 89 years old. I'm being mean. They're literally 89 years old, super rich billionaires, like on life support in nursing homes. And they're just like, oh, we got a call. It looks bad. Oh, get rid of them. Oh. So we're led by geriatrics that are groveling. And then Trump's whole support is being cut out from under him, and then you're there simply trying to cover things, and, and, and like, oh, that's why Oliver Darcy laughs, because he's in control. They run everything. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. No, it's really absurd, and this is a legitimate question. This is journalism. I'm asking Oliver Darcy why he lobbied Facebook and Twitter, something that is a factual news report. I mean, this, was, this is well known. If you look at the timestamp, Twitter and Oliver Darcy literally posted the same tweet at the very same time the day that you were banned from Twitter. And so 
uh, for this to happen, right, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think that they're obviously colluding, and we now know that the SPLC and, and groups like CARE and many others are working with these tech companies and left-wing news organizations to ban and silence and censor. I'm glad you mentioned CARE, because here's the deal. I'm not against Islamics themselves, but CARE, day one, they spread their money, the Islamic groups, all of it. Anybody that opposes them is shut down. And so I'm just proud to stand against this, but that's exactly what we're talking about is these groups, Laura, that think we don't have free speech in America and they think it's a big joke. And to watch Oliver Darcy laugh about it, he's, an, he's just something else. Yeah, well, he laughs about it. And then he has all these other uh, fake news uh, shills, people like Molly Jong Fast and this guy named Christopher Mathias who works for puffing glue post and people who have falsely accused me of being things. And I confronted uh, Christopher as well. And I said, you know, you call me a white supremacist and an anti-Muslim bigot and a racist uh, in your in your uh, articles. Why don't you uh, correct the record? And these people are such cowards and they just, they, they try to avoid eye contact with me and then they go, you know, they look in their No, phone. I agree. They, they always run in fear. What's just like, so they're like zombies. Say. Why do you think, Laura, they always run? They run well, from... They're cowards, they're keyboard warriors. And unlike them, I actually take the fight to the streets and I get in people's faces and confront them because I'm not a pussy, you know? And a lot of these people are. They, if, if you're gonna talk about people and you're gonna lie about people and you're gonna write about people and you're gonna open your mouth and make money uh, defaming other people, when you then you better be able to answer questions. You now, Laura, be I'm gonna say this when we come back, stay there. But no more games. It's time to go after those attacking our free speech, attacking our sovereignty, attacking the very existence of our country. Because I talk to folks that work at Fox News, and they, they say it's like the Democrats run Fox News. You talk to everybody, it's, it's like they're in control because they put their people everywhere. So what does the president do to counter this? What do we do to counter this globalism and say no we don't stand for this, where Laura Loomer politely, I've watched the whole 10 minute video, talks to Oliver Darcy, this little arrogant SOB that is involved in censorship and he runs off and the, and the criminal uh, Southern Poverty Law Center has her banned. What do we do, Laura Loomer? Well, we need to start fighting back, you know, and I'm not going to allow these people to deplatform me and censor me. You better believe when I find Matt Schlapp, he's gonna get Loomer too. And I want to know why this never Trumper who never even supported President Trump, you know, Matt Schlapp, if you recall, didn't even want President Trump speaking at CPAC two years ago. Don't you remember? Matt Schlapp was part of this, uh, this group of people, this group of conservatives that was supporting Ted Cruz and other people. They didn't even like him. And now his wife is enjoying the benefits of working in the White House, and they're trying to pretend like they don't even know about this censorship. One of your correspondents, Jake, actually confronted Matt Schlapp about banning me and other conservatives. Yeah, he's the head of CPAC. And there are all these big, I don't care if they're whatever they are, these big bloated Nelly guys. Like, oh, hi, oh. And it's just, like, disgusting. Well, he pretended like he didn't know what, what, uh, what Jake was talking about. But how do you not know what he's talking about when I was literally the number one trending story on Twitter yesterday for getting banned at CPAC? I don't even have a Twitter, and yet I keep trending on Twitter number one. So when are these people going to learn that no matter how much they ban me, my ideas are so great and the people want to hear my message so much that they can't suppress it? Notice well, that's it, Laura, is that you're exploding, we're exploding. You you were on Joe Rogan, and you need to tell Joe Rogan to stop, like, nagging me and avoiding me because I've been contacting him and trying to get on his show to set the record straight about Jack Dorsey. And you trended number one, I trended number one, Jacob Wall trended number one. All these people who are banned managed to trend number one. And... Obviously, their censorship isn't going to work because you can't kill an idea. And people like Joe Rogan, even though he, you know, he caved to everybody's criticism and had you on the show, he wouldn't have done that unless people spoke out. He let Jack Dorsey get away with lying. He said that he didn't know why you were banned. But, you know, one thing that you should have really pressed uh, Joe Rogan on is why he takes money from Twitter. Twitter is one of his donors, one of his sponsors. So why is Joe Rogan, if he really is your friend, if he really does care about you on a personal level, why is he taking this blood money from Jack Dorsey? That doesn't look like a very good friend to me, Alex. 
What I know is whether it's Google or Twitter or Facebook, as long as they allow free speech, I don't care if they're rich and, and they're powerful. I'm just sick of them literally trying to suppress Western speech. I'm, I, it, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, something needs to be done about it. And at CPAC, I actually, uh, I wore a freeloomer.com t-shirt. Those are going to be available on my website soon and a red uh, Stop the Bias hat. And I saw Don Jr. And I actually uh, ran through the hallways and I gave Don Jr. one of the Stop the Bias hats. And I uh, I said, hey, you know, when is your dad going to do something about this so, so that all of his biggest supporters are not censored? Don't you think it's time something's done? And he told me he agrees with me. And so I was able to get him to endorse the Stop the Bias movement and you know, you can see my video, which I posted on uh, Instagram, and he actually was waving the hat. And uh, a lot of members of the Trump administration actually approached me this weekend here at CPAC and told me that they're on our side. And that well, that's the good news. Uh, yeah, me too. And, I, and I'm glad you're saying that. Is, yeah, that, is that Trump and them get it, but they need like nerves. They need our stimulus and us saying, hey, this is what we want. So they get that heat. We just sit back as nationalists or conservatives or Christians or whatever and just put up with stuff, we get screwed over. But if we're vocal and involved and put pressure on things, things yeah. will change. Uh, Laura Loomer, thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Alex. Well, there goes Laura Loomer, and she made a lot of great points today. And so did the crew. And I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central. We're going to have the uh, David Knight sh show that comes on at... Um, 8 a.m. And you've got the war room who comes on after I go off at 3 p.m. Central. But what Laura is saying is absolutely true about what's happening. And and the average Republican operative will tell you, oh, we agree with you. But there's all these little politicos that are in between there that are trying to, like, curry favor and do side deals and things with the Democrats. And it, it's, it, it's called treason. Is really what it's called, but uh, we've got Mike Adams and Counter Thing coming up when this show ends here in just a few minutes. And then we've also got a lot of other key topics to cover. You know, I didn't get to the human mice hybrids that are mainstream news. And at a certain point, I can't be expected to handle all this. But I'm doing the best job I can without going completely crazy. And so I think in the last few minutes of this broadcast, we won't get to all of it, but I want to end with Trump rocks CPAC because I could have done the whole two-hour show with Trump's two-plus-hour speech that was pretty damn powerful. The complete opposite of Hillary Clinton. So here's the first few minutes of Trump rocks CPAC. The full report's up on Infowars.com and Newswars.com. John Bound put it together. And then we'll be back tomorrow, 8 a.m. with David Knight, 11 a.m. with myself, 3 p.m. with Owen Schroyer. So here's that report. You know I'm building the wall, we're finishing the wall, we got a lot of money. We're down to 3.7% unemployment, the lowest number in a long time. Companies are roaring back into our country, and now we want people to come in. We need workers to come in, but they've got to come in legally, and they've got to come in through merit, merit, merit. While President Trump promoted common sense at CPAC regarding the long overdue security of the U.S. southern border, Bernie Sanders announced his presidential bid from his hometown of Brooklyn, New York, pushing the hordes to swallow his hollow message, claiming xenophobia and racism are behind President Trump's policies. Black and white, Latino, Asian American, Native American, gay and straight, young and old, men and women, native born and immigrant, we are together. And together we will transform this country. The American people are merely collateral damage to be ignored as the Democrats press the will of their U.N. master's replacement migration directive. 100,000 assaults, 30,000 sex crimes, 25,000 burglaries, 4,000 kidnappings, and 4,000 violent murders. These are people that ICE is going in and getting and either putting in jail or ideally bringing them back to other countries and letting them put in jail, because we don't want them. We don't want to have to pay for them for 50 years.
all the nonsense you hear about the people that come in illegally are far better than the people we have. It's not true, folks, okay? It's false. It's false propaganda. Right? One recent study from FAIR, F-A-I-R, found that illegal aliens are incarcerated at three times the rate of legal residents. Those are the numbers. And if you look at prison population in federal prisons, these federal prisons are, it, the number is staggering. But you don't hear that. You hear like these people are the greatest people in the world. Just ask the angel moms, how good are they? This is my son. That's all I have left of him is ashes. And this is not a manufactured crisis. This is real. This affected my life. It destroyed my family. And I'm tired of being insulted and re-victimized by politicians who don't speak up for us. They speak up for illegals, for lawbreakers. The president's plan is not to make us safer. It is, in fact, an attempt to fulfill his campaign promise to build an unnecessary wall that he said Mexico would pay for. There is no emergency at the border. Uh, furthermore, it appears that uh, instead of protecting our national security, that the president's declaration actually steals billions of dollars from high-priority military construction projects. We've heard a lot of cries from uh, the administration about there being a uh, problem on the southern border with caravans of, uh, loaded with people being human trafficked. And there's just simply uh, uh, unsubstantiated, uh, this is un unsubstantiated and unfounded.